Okay, in this video, we're going to continue with more examples from implicit differentiation section. So we're going to find dy dx of this equation, which means I do need to do each term individually. And e to any exponent is e to that same exponent, but then I do have to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. Now, since there are two different variables here, I will need to apply the product rule. So the first term, or the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Then the derivative of x to the sixth is six x to the fifth. Derivative of y to the sixth is six y to the fifth. But this is not an x base, it's a y base, so I do have to multiply by the derivative of that base. And the derivative of x is one. So let's clean this up, and at the same time, I am going to distribute this e to the x, y. So I end up with x e to the x y dy dx plus y e to the x y plus 6 x to the fifth minus 6 y to the fifth dy dx equal to 1. Now I'm going to move um, the non dy dx terms to the left. So I'm going to minus this term and this term from both sides. And I get x e to the xy dy dx minus 6y to the fifth dy dx equal to 1 minus y e to the xy minus x or I'm sorry, 6x to the fifth. So then I'm going to factor out the dy dx, and I get x e to the xy minus 6y to the fifth in parentheses. The right hand side is going to stay exactly the same. And then I'm going to divide both sides by what's here in the parentheses, causing it to reduce or cancel on the left hand side, and causing it to become the denominator on the right hand side. And now we have found dy dx, so we are done with that particular problem. So then for the next problem, we have, again, find dy dx. So we do have all of this at an exponent applied. So in order for me to take the derivative of the left-hand side, I do need to use the power rule. So 3 times the base. and then decrease the power by one, but my base is not just an x, so I do have to multiply by the derivative of this. Now the derivative of sine is cosine, but my angle is not just an x, so I do have to multiply by the derivative of this angle, which is pi, plus the derivative of cosine is negative sine pi y, and again, the angle is not just an x, so I do have to multiply by the derivative of that, and that is pi, the multiplier, and then the derivative of y is dy dx. And then, finally, the derivative of one is zero. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. So I'm going to have pi cosine of pi x minus sine pi y. Oh, this pi can go in the front. So minus pi sine y and then dy dx. Now I do need to move the term that has the dy dx. Um, since there's only one term that has a dy dx, it would be easier to move that over to the right instead of moving everything else over to the left. So what I do want to do is I want to distribute this factor here to both terms, and then we'll talk about it once, we've, once we get there. So I'm going to have 3 pi cosine of pi x times sine of pi x 
plus cosine of pi y squared minus 3 pi sine pi y sine pi x plus cosine pi y squared dy dx equal to 0. So if I want to keep this term on the left hand side, I do need to move this term over to the right hand side. And in order for me to do that, I will have to subtract. So I get negative 3 pi cosine of pi x sine pi x plus cosine pi y squared. And then now to get the dy dx, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3 pi sine y sine pi x plus cosine pi y squared. Oops, I forgot the pi there. So then this term with the square will cancel. The three negative three pi's will cancel, leaving me with three y or I'm sorry, dy dx equal to cosine of pi x over sine of pi y. And because these are the same, I cannot write um, cotangent. This is dy dx.